Hello. Hello. Welcome to Say You Think You're Iconic, the movie podcast where we watch movies where white people paint themselves orange. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. we'll get it, we'll get into that later. Yeah, we will. We really will. Um so Kelly, how was your week? I had a uh interesting week. Ooh. Um <laughs> so um my mom has been out of town for the last like well five days. So I've had to fill in for like making dinner every night. Mm. <laughs> and so um bless my brother, he likes to help out where he can. So uh I get home and I have like this whole dinner plan. And he's like, oh yeah, I got dinner covered. I'm like, oh, you do? Like you, you never cook. Like, what are you gonna do? I'm scared. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm like, okay. So it gets closer to dinner time and he's like, okay, yeah. Um, what do you want from um B dubs? And I'm like, bro, I'm vegetarian. You know we don't eat chicken. Like, what are we gonna get at B dubs? He's like, there's cauliflower wings. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is your version of making dinner. We're going to buy it. That's cool. That's all right. That's, that would have been mine too. That's all right. <laughs> uh, that would have been mine too. So I've had, this is my first time ever having B-dubs. Um, cauliflower wings, pretty good. Um, I just wish they were bigger because, you know, it says wings. It's, you know. Girl, there's no protein in it. Of course, you need to get a lot of it. There's, you're, you're going to be hungry. Oh, I know. We literally bought like two large packs and some wedge fries. And like, it barely fed the three of us. And I'm just like, I mean, all of us are full, but like, what if we weren't? Then we'd be in trouble. <laughs> then you would have to order something else. Yeah. yeah. So that, I mean, that was good. And then Friday, I'm on my way to work and I'm, I'm, I wore a blazer to work. I don't know why I wanted to be super fancy, but I got hot in the car and I went to take it off. And when I'm getting the, what is it? The left sleeve off Pit something stain. in my up, a separate, something in my upper shoulder, just like didn't snap, but it, it felt like it was like really tight. And, and then it started burning and I'm like, ah, uh, what did I do? <laughs> so I get to work and um, when our massage therapist comes in, I look, I look at her and I'm just like, uh, can, can you check my shoulder? Because I did not do something good to it. And she's like, okay. So she checks it. She's like, yeah, you, you like strained it or something. I'm like, oh, great. So that night at home, I, I put on these um, like massage, massage, muscle patches, mm -hmm. like soothe aches and whatever that my mom bought. And uh, we put it on. And I'm looking at the box and I'm just like, oh, there's latex in this. And I'm allergic to latex, by the way. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, I just put these on. I need the relief, so I'll just leave it on. And uh, it started burning. And I thought that was just the uh, um, the menthol and whatever that, are, that was in the patches. No, it was not the menthol. So I take off the patches the next day and like, it's kind of itchy and like, I can't get the sticky stuff off of my shoulder because I can't reach it. So I like go to my mom and she's like, yeah, you've got a huge rash on your shoulder. <laughs> so the moral of the story is Kelly's not that bright, but I you mean, know, it's fine. It was no. either I had terrible shoulder pain or I got a rash because I'm allergic. There, there were so many other things you could have done for your shoulder. I, so, I mean, <laughs> so many other things, Kelly. If you had just consulted someone for two seconds, they could have given you more options. <laughs> I know, but like, I was tired. I just wanted to leave the patches on. So I did. I made the dumb decision. It was my decision. But yeah, so now I've got a huge rash on my shoulder. Um, that I can't even reach to scratch. So I mean, at least that's good. But yeah, that's that's wow. me right now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I never said I was. I never claimed to be smart. No, okay. no, and you shouldn't. Um, <laughs> wow. 
I have a degree, but don't do not assume that. Oh, girl, they're just handing those out now. <laughs> they're, they're just. <laughs> and anyway, it's 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 in an art degree, so. <laughs> Girl, with all the people I went to school with, I can say for a fact they are just handing out degrees. <laughs> Some of those people were beyond stupid, but you oh, know, no. whatever. Um, well, with me, wild week, wild week. Um, I was oh. driving on the freeway and there was oh, a yes. car on fire, just completely on fire. And yeah. like no one was doing anything. We just like went into the next lane and just went past it. Like it was hilarious <laughs> to me. Like that's so it's like peak California. Like we did not yeah. care. Like no one yeah. stopped to see if there was anyone in the car. No one stopped to like call the police. We just moved into another lane and just kept going. The definition of staying in your lane. Staying in your exactly. Like literally and figuratively. Because you can't cause traffic here. Like you just no. need to keep going. In California, if you start traffic, if you're in, it's worse if you're the one that wasn't even in the accident. If you start traffic, you're the devil, bro. Yeah. I, when I got in my car crash, I'll fight you. When I got in my car crash, we took up a lane. Tell me why a woman drove straight next to us and was like, if no one's hurt, get out the road. (laughs) I was locked in my car. Yeah. Uh, and she yelled what, at what, me yeah. for not moving my car, which was totaled, by the way, out mm-hmm. of the way. Yeah. So that's California for you. Yeah. In California, we're pretty chill with everything, but except the road. for traffic. Yep. Yeah. Don't play on the road. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. Don't play with me on the road. Don't, don't like cut me off. Don't try to brake check me. I will fight you. Yeah. But the minute I get out of my car, I'm the nicest I'm person I'm the sweetest ever. person in the world. Yeah. Exactly. I don't like conflict. But on the road, something about the roads in something California. Something about the road. Probably <laughs> because all these people from all these different states who don't know how to drive come here and they just like do like irrationally dumb things on the road and it just like desensitizes you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like this week there was somebody from Maine. Like, how did you even get here? Maine is clearly on the opposite side it's like on the other side of the world yeah it really is um and they were driving in um the middle lane not even not the slow lane they should have been in the slow lane and i'm just i had to pass it but i kind of just looked at them like right you're so dumb (laughs) it it literally says 65 but you see all of us going 70 and above oh yeah um i had to have a fight with my aunt about this um in california we don't go the speed limit it's literally the law to go the flow of traffic yeah yeah like my aunt tried to fight me on this and she's lived here longer than me and i was like no you Mm -hmm. most definitely go with the flow of traffic not the speed limit i can't even think of it she's originally from iowa so forgive her for that (laughs) i'm i'm here born and raised i know what i'm talking about right i don't think i've ever gone the speed limit right unless there was traffic and then you go the speed limit (laughs) and then you go the speed limit and then you go the flow of traffic because you're in flow oh yeah because you're yeah like but like if it's a wide open road i'm going 80 yeah minimum if i'm driving to la on highway 5 i'm going 90 plus i mean you didn't even get to five yet you were going 90 plus (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) the last time we went if i'm going to la I'm going to get there an hour early. Yeah, if it'll we're... say it'll say seven hours, but we're getting there in like six and a half, maybe six and a half. Six. If we're riding with Brandy, we'll get there in five hours. Yeah, yeah, I can <laughs> attest to that. It's And I will be clutching the little <laughs> handle. Thingy. Yep, yep, yep. You're going to try to look at peace, but you've got a death grip on either the door handle or the uh, the bar at the front. Exactly. <laughs> And that's not even the that's not even the last of my week. Like, let's keep going. Um, I think on Thursday, maybe Friday. I don't know. My days are kind of just smushing together at this point. Um, I created my annual birthday <laughs> spreadsheet in Google Form. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yep. proud of myself. I have two great options for trips. Yes, he does. Love myself for that. And I like budgeted it out for everyone and everything. Like I'm a math whiz. Yeah. And we got 
And we got a questionnaire. Yes, a questionnaire. Also, that started a whole uh, um, bad like work email joke in our mm -hmm. group chat. That I will say Jordan started it because he used no, EOD. I didn't. He used EOD in the group chat. Who uses EOD I in was, a non-work group chat? I was trying to keep it short. Like instead of just saying end of day, I put EOD. And then Kelly wrote out a full paragraph in like work, <laughs> like email format, and it triggered me. <laughs> but then he didn't drop it. He sent an even more detailed um oh yeah that work was funny email that format was funny. back to me. <laughs> that was with, funny with his name at the bottom with my pronouns. pronouns. Yep. It was hilarious. Bro, I was like, <laughs> you did not just do that to me <laughs> when I've already clocked out of my actual work. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great. Um, yeah. So far, I have two responses on my Google form. So great. Love that for me. One of them is not mine because no. I procrastinate with absolutely and I, everything. And I can't even, I can't tell who responded, but I can tell who responded. <laughs> <laughs> like google won't tell me who responded but like when i'm reading it i can tell can totally by tell. like the sentence structure mm. like what they're saying who it is so yeah <laughs> leslie and brandy answered okay i love how i thought it would be brina and leslie <laughs> no <laughs> unless unless um I don't even think Sabrina even knows where St. Thomas is. So I don't think so. Okay. Because <laughs> like I ha I had to like be like St. Thomas. Like I was like, what what is that? I was like, is that what an is island? That? I had to like look it up. I was like, wait. <laughs> You're like, I don't even know where that is. Yeah, but yeah, um, that won't be happening. But you know, <laughs> that's why we do the forum. That's yes, why we do. do the forum. Yep. Okay. But yeah, that was pretty much it for me. Nothing else really happened. Boring life. Mm, yeah. Boring life. Sorry. Um, but. <laughs> Sorry. I'm good. But we can start talking about this movie. Yay. Yay. Okay. So this week we are doing Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Yay. Let's get started. Yay. So our movie starts off in the Empire of Persia. The King Sherman. He rules over his entire empire alongside his brother, Nizam. Uh, Nizam. Nizam. I will be messing up these names. I'm so sorry. Yeah. That's but it doesn't matter because these aren't even real Persian people. They're white. Yeah. Everyone, they're everyone in this movie Persian is names. white. Yes. They're yeah. just painted orange. Yeah, there's a filter put on. There's a filter put on and they all went spray tan. Everyone tanning. got, yeah, everyone got a spray tan. And that's it. Yeah, and nobody then, in this movie is Persian. And then for uh, for the woman, they didn't even bother to spray tan her, so. No, <laughs> yeah. they did not. But she lives in the desert, but she's milky white. That'll yeah. make a lick of sense to me. She's, she's never been outside a day in her life. Yeah, obviously. And so... The king has two sons, but his family was not complete until he took in a brave orphan he found on the streets about to be like, what would you call it? When they're just about to like uh, cut off your hand for stealing? Yeah, like that was a, a normal like treatment for stealing. Yeah, I don't know what it's but called. I don't know what it's called. I don't know if but there's a word for that. There probably is, but we're dumb, <laughs> yeah. so it doesn't matter. We don't, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so he sees this kid about to get his hand chopped off, and he's like, that kid's brave. I'm taking him. He's coming with me. Mm -hmm. And he did. He did. And so he took in a child named Dastan. We didn't cut to 15 years later, and the Persian army is waiting to invade the holy city of Am Alamut? Alamut, Alamut. Yeah. yes. Because the king's firstborn... Prince Tuss is weighing his options with his uncle and his younger brother Garson. Garson, that is not it. Mm. I think it's Garsif. Autocorrect. Yeah. Sorry. 
Um, meanwhile, Dastan is having a street fight when he is called to convene with his family. Also, can I just say, I forgot that Jake Gyllenhaal had to do an English accent for this. You did? That yeah. was one of the things I like remembered the most. Really? Was that, because I thought, because he actually does a very good English accent. I can't lie. He actually yeah. does a good one. I thought he was English for like the longest time. Really? Yeah. Because usually oh. in movies, you can tell if someone's faking one. Mm-hmm. His is actually pretty good. Yeah, and so they discover that um, Alamut is selling weapons to their enemies, so Tuss decides to invade at dawn. While the Persian army is attacking the main gate, Dastan and his friends disobey orders and slip through the side. Dastan then sends everyone else to go open the outer gate of the city while he works to open the much harder inner gate. Mm. Um. They get to the gates, they open the outer gate, and then after a lot of like parkour, <laughs> Dastan <laughs> sets the fire somehow. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. He just found like this random drum of oil that they had, and he just like dropped it and then started a fire, and it made absolutely no sense. Yeah. Also, how did he know it was oil? I don't know. Like it could have been empty, it could have been water, could have been anything. Yeah, but he, homie's like, I'm gonna just throw my fire in there, though. He, he obviously, he obviously also is like very intuitive because like he was like just doing random stuff and like out the corner of his eye, he would catch like a rope and then oh he would gosh, tie that yeah. rope to something and then jump off a building. Yeah, it was weird. This man is either super smart or he has no regard for his life. He has no regard for his life, Kelly. Absolutely not. <laughs> he just puts he puts on his prince caspian wig every morning and he's like (laughs) what can i do Prince caspian had beautiful hair what can i do today that might get me killed but also might make me look like the baddest bitch in all of persia right (laughs) he's like honestly my need to look like a bad bitch outweighs my need to live exactly i need the validation material girl (laughs) got it material girl and so Dastan then fights a man and takes a relic that he was trying to sneak out of the city. Then he takes over the city pretty much. Like he just, fight, he just fights this man and then everyone else just like gives up. <laughs> also, I love the fact that um, when they breach the gates, one of uh, Dastan's man, men uh, like waves like a fire signal. Yeah. And the brother sees it, but like you they see are, the, the camera makes like a zoom out. They're like miles and they're, away. And then, yeah, this man is like 16 miles away. And then he still sees this man with a with waving fire. It and was Dastan. Knows. He was, and he yeah. was like, it's Dastan. And I was like, how yeah. do you know that's Dastan? Yeah, like, sir, how, what, what percentage of like, what's your vision? It's not 2020. I feel like everyone in this movie just has insane vision. Right. Like, can you zoom in with your eyes? Because there's no way he saw that. Because he didn't have, like, he didn't have anything to, like, help him see. He just saw Mm -hmm. with his naked eye. And he was like, it's Dastan. Yeah. Like, excuse me? Wild. And so, yeah, after they breach the city, Tuss offers to marry the princess of the city, Tamina. And she initially declines, but after seeing that Dastan has the dagger that she was trying to protect, she agrees. Um, Prince Sherriman somehow arrives, like, right after all this happens. Don't know how that happened. Oh, yeah. But he, like, arrives, like, right after they take over the city. Um, And he's very mad Mm. because they attacked a holy city. Yes. Especially since they get there and there's no proof of any weapons. Why is it always a holy city that has to get attacked because there's quote unquote weapons in there? I don't know. I don't know why they think a holy city would have weapons, especially since it's the only since not having weapons is the only thing keeping them from being invaded. I don't know why people would think that they would have weapons. And then you're going to take the information that only now they're starting to make weapons and you're going to believe it. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. and then like instead of like going to them and be like hey are you making weapons you just <laughs> right. invade their city <laughs> you just <laughs> zero to hundred real quick you just take over their city kill most of their men and then look for evidence and then look for evidence <laughs> yeah that's that's the smart diplomatic way to do it of course and so Prince Tess then goes to Dastan and asks him to gift their father a cloak. I think you said it was the priest's robe, like robe. the high priest's yeah, robe. Yeah, it was a robe. I didn't put what it was. Uh, it was a robe. <laughs> it was very, I guess, beautiful for that time. Yeah, it wasn't as ornate as I thought it would yeah, be. Yeah, it looked kind of cheap. But, you know, it was it was... It was something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wants him to gift it to their father at that night's banquet while he goes searching for the city's weapons. Tess gives Dastan the robe, and then Dastan goes. Oh, he also tells Dastan that if their father does not approve of Tess marrying Princess Tamina, um, to kill her. Because yeah. if he can't have her, no one no can. No one can. Trash man. Trash man. Throw him out. In, insanity. Worms for brains. Yeah. Like, you think your allies were upset with you taking over this city. How upset are they going to be when they find out you killed their Killed regent? their princess. Right. Uh, what? Okay. You can think of anything else? No. She just like, had she just had to die. I mean, it's already been established he is not good at making decisions, which is very yeah. scary because he's gonna be the next king. Future king, yeah. Mm. Mm. This empire is not long for this world. No. <laughs> and so after everyone eats at the banquet, uh Dastan presents the king with the robe and the princess, and he approves of her. Even though he's like, Tess already has a couple of wives. Why does, yeah, she, need a, why does he need another one? <laughs> right. This boy's just collecting them. But he's point. like, but he's like, whatever. I, I don't care at this point. And so, but then he's like, actually, I think she should marry you, Dastan. You don't have any wives. Because <laughs> that's a logical um, next step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of just letting her go. He's like, yeah. well... She needs to marry someone. Yeah. And I've got my two other sons. They already like, have multiple wives. Yeah. And I'm too old. So right. I really would. But uh, Dustin, you don't have any yet. So yeah. Here's your first one. Here's your first one. Let's, I, I, I low key want an arranged marriage. Don't do that for me, please. <laughs> I mean, you don't really have to think about it. Yeah. Just make sure they have the same sick twisted sense of humor as me and we'll be good yeah we'll be fine we'll be perfectly fine um and so shortly after the king puts on the robe it begins to smoke and he dies after being poisoned by poisoned rubies which made no sense to me what yeah um what's his name garciv the Uh like middle brother Uh it's all like the rubies are poison and i was like what does that mean he said the robe is poison he said rubies really he said rubies i had i didn't have the captions i had my captions on he said rubies and i was like what does that mean the robe the robe being poison wouldn't have helped me either but (laughs) yeah made no sense but we move forward we move forward and so um what's her name tamina and dastan escape the city because everyone wants guess um wants dastan killed dastan dead mm-hmm. they're like you you murdered the king and he's like no i didn't and they're like we saw you right even though he didn't put the cloak on him Mm-mm. um he tried to take the cloak off while the king was burning. <laughs> right. Like, why would you do that to someone you wanted to kill? Yeah. And then why would I kill someone in such a public manner? 
if I wanted to assassinate my father, I do it in private. <laughs> yeah, I do it in private, quietly. Like, and then I'd be shocked when he died. Yeah, I'm like, what are you talking about? I was I was in my room reading a book. What do you, What do you mean? Right. What do you mean my father is dead? Not me gifting him something that kills him. Like, come on. Right in public. In Ugh. public. The the brain cells are not braining, Kelly. Yeah, they're really not. This is why Persia did not last. Yeah. And so in the desert, Destan realizes that Tuss might have set him up because he's the one who gave him the robe to give to their father so that he would become king. See, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That like, makes that's sense. a good plan. Yeah. That's a good that plan. That is a good plan. That's how you kill someone. Fra- frame your youngest brother. Take the throne. Yeah. And then so after this, Tamina tries to kill Dastan with his own sword, causing him to accidentally touch the ruby on top of the dagger. And then he goes back in time like a minute or something like that. Why does it feel like it went went back way further than a minute? Because it took longer to go back than the actual (laughs) time. True. It took like six minutes to get back. Yeah. (laughs) For for the like 40 or so seconds we went back in time, it took him like a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah, it took him double time. Mm -hmm. Also, can I just say, how did Tamina think she was going to take down a prince who by himself and like six other guys infiltrated her city. I don't think she thought that far ahead. I thought, I think maybe she was like, I can sneak attack him, but like that didn't happen. No. And so he does that. He goes back to the moment before she like stabs him. She stabs him again. He presses the Ruby again. (laughs) And then we just keep going back. It happens twice. Yeah, Des- Destin is smart in certain situations. Yeah, and so Destin uses up all the sand and questions Tamina about it and realizes that his brother invaded the city for the dagger. Hmm. Uh, Destin then decides to head to his father's funeral so that he can convince his uncle of Tessa's treachery, but is told by Tamina that regular sand won't work on the dagger and he needs uh sand of time yeah some with, and there is no and it doesn't exist there's no more mm-hmm. sorry sorry not and, sorry kind of sorry not sorry by demi lovato um and so <laughs> while walking tamina pretends to faint and then she knocks out death stand taking his horse and the dagger Destin then wakes up and is met by a group of thugs before he convinces them <laughs> that he's a great guy. Um, and they catch up with Tamina and he sells her to them. Mm. Fair. Uh, yeah, fair. <laughs> fair. Also, can I just say that this movie like collected MCU characters before they were really into the MCU? Oh, yeah. There's so many. So many. Yeah, there's Trevor... There's Jake Gyllenhaal, and then there's Doc Ock. Yeah. I feel like uh, Ben Kingsley will be in there at, one, at some point. He has to. He's in everything. I mean, he has yeah. to be in the MCU at one point. Yeah, at this point. I mean, they had Harry Styles. Yeah. Harry Styles. Like, they are running out of people. Like, they use they up really so are. many people in the MCU. They are running out of people. Right. At this point, like... They put like Harry Styles in, and then now they're like, who else can we shove into an MCU movie? Like, they got Angelina Jolie to be in an MCU movie. Right, right. The sky's the limit at this point. At uh, at this point, nobody can say no to an MCU movie. Yeah. If you say no, you're dumb. (laughs) Don't say no to an MCU movie. Right. Um, Yeah. And so he also takes the necklace that she is wearing. Mm-hmm. um because he realizes that there's more sand in her yeah. necklace mm-hmm. um the leader of the gang Sheik amar realizes who dastan is and captures him for the reward that persia has 
Um, and then Tamina causes a distraction by letting loose some ostriches at an ostrich race they're having. I love, I love how like obsessed he is with the um, the ostriches. Oh, Amar loves his ostriches. <laughs> he loves them so much. Oh my gosh, it's cut. It's like it's a weird obsession, but I also think it's really funny. It's how really we just funny. like can't shut up about the ostriches. It's kind of endearing. Mm-hmm. It's it's great, and so the two of them get back together. You know, team up so they can get out of the city. Yay, team! Yay, teamwork! And then they both make their way to Avrat for the funeral. Inside the city, Dastan sneaks into his father's carriage where like his body is is yeah you know. um and then i don't i don't know how this happens but he like sneaks he somehow had paper with him he writes a note for his uncle oh no he took it from his dad's uh a burial thing that he like plucked a piece of paper out oh okay mm-hmm. cool 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 and so <laughs> he um takes the note puts his hand outside of the carriage no one notices this. Yeah, and there's like broad daylight. Hundred, there's hundreds of people around. And he mm-hmm. puts the note into his uncle's pocket. Yeah. Yep. Can yep. I just say also, how did he even feel that? I don't know. Because he's maybe on he a heard, horse and he's maybe being he jostled heard, around. Maybe he just heard something. Uh, let's yes. like, Or maybe let's, he, he, he probably saw something. He probably saw his arm. Yeah, he probably yeah. saw like the little shift on the the carriage or whatever it is, um, like move. Yeah. Well, in anyway, whatever happened. Anyway. Um, he gets he gets it. He gets the note, and the two later meet, and Dustin tries to show him the dagger, but Tamina has switched it out somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you she. Don't know how. I think I know how. They just didn't is it sh- when she put the jacket on? When she put the jacket on him. Yeah. yeah okay. And then so Dastan then sees that his uncle's hands are burnt and he realizes that his uncle killed his father before soldiers begin to attack. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Dastan like parkours his way out of there. <laughs> and then he Yeah, a, there's a lot of parkour. A in lot this movie. of parkour. And then he has a fight with his brother Garsev. And then after he beats Garsev's ass, he's like, hey, <laughs> I didn't kill our father. And then he just leaves. Um, Nizam then tells Tuss that Destin came to kill him. And that if they catch Destin, they should not put him on trial. They should just kill him. Jeez. Just kill him on sight. <laughs> don't, right. let him, don't let him say anything. Just as soon as you see him, slit his throat. That should have been suspicious. That's very suspicious. Yeah, that should have been suspicious. And then, and then Tess is like, um, no, we're civilized people. Like, we're not going to just murder him without a trial. Right, especially a prince. Yeah. You're not even going to like make an example out of him. Like, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so Nizam then goes to hire some assassins to kill Destin. I really want to know, like, why he was going through so much trouble for all of this. Like, right. So much trouble. If he had just simplified his plan a little bit, he probably could have got away with it. But you'd, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, he made it way too complicated. He made it way too complicated. And so... Um, Dastan finds Tamina and he tells her about his uncle and then he's like what's the truth about this dagger why does he want this dagger and she tells a story about how the gods wanted to destroy the earth because of how terrible humans are valid um, but after very valid. <laughs> very valid but after a girl offered up her life to save humanity they showed mercy and then they put sand the sand that they were going to use to like destroy the earth into the sand glass. And then they created the dagger. And then the girl was the first guardian of the dagger. And 
it is the only thing capable of opening the sand glass and removing the sands of time. Why would they ever create a dagger to release the uh, uh, yeah the destructive sand? Don't know that. I Don't, mean, if they're can't answer that for you. If they're gods, they could just do it themselves. And why would a human want to just destroy all of humanity anyway? I don't know. We also learned that um, if you like pierce the sand glass thingy mm. and then you open the back, like where you put in the sand, like mm. all the sand will like flow through and then you could go back in time Wherever as far you as want. you want. Yeah. Um, because usually the dagger can only turn back time one minute. Yeah. So, yay. Um, yay. Dastan then realizes that Nizam wants to go back in time to not save his brother when he was attacked by a lion when they were children so that he would become mm. king. Which, okay. Okay. I mean, Psych- at that psychotic point, behavior. Yeah. <laughs> this man should not be trusted with anything. No. Um, and so Tamina tells him that doing this would break the sand glass causing the sands to be released and destroying the planet and so destin agrees to help her hide the dagger and they both go off uh when they stop for water the sheik amar has like caught up to them and is upset because they ruined his ostrich race business and now he only has (laughs) one ostrich left and it's suicidal it's a whole thing it's my favorite thing (laughs) like he has to like put like a head covering on the thingy to like calm it down and he like gives it kisses (laughs) and he has to like keep her on like 24 hour watch well yeah because she'll take her life yeah how (laughs) yeah really though i love that he's like yeah she's suicidal and i'm just like yeah, but how would she ever take her own life? She's an, she, ostrich. she's an ostrich. She's an ostrich. Like, is she just going to repeatedly run into a wall? Like, I don't hey, understand. Is she is she going to look for the tallest ledge and jump? I don't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but also, how did he find Dastan before the um, Persian army did? I don't know because he said that he was following them for a week, and I was like, how? Right. Like the Persian army has been tracking him for probably twice as long. And they have a much bigger incentive to find him. (laughs) Right. And there's more people in the Persian army that could cover more area. But yet you found him because plot. Also because of the love of ostriches. Yeah. It's very strong. (laughs) It's very strong. I need somebody to love me like he loves his ostriches. Exactly. (laughs) And so That's Amar, all I'm asking. yeah, and so Omar is like, I'm going to turn you in for the reward and then I'm going to restart my ostrich business. <laughs> and then, so that night while everyone is sleeping, they're attacked by snakes. And Sesso, like this giant African man who's good at throwing stuff knives knives yeah. why do they keep doing those that in these like egyptian persian movies why is there always a giant black man who's good That's, at throwing stuff yeah he's and he's special in some way yeah it's either magic or it's some type of fighting it's magical negro and i don't like it it is i don't it is. like and it they, and they barely talk they barely talk yeah they barely talk they have like two lines maybe mm, i don't like it Mm. very problematic i mean we're still casting white people in um pop roles so yeah mm, let's not do that anymore so mm-hmm. yeah he um says so gives dastan the dagger to help kill the snakes and so dastan presses the button so that he can anticipate all the snakes attacks mm. and then later dastan t- after like they've killed all the snakes the next morning, Dastan tells Amar that they were attacked by h- assassins. <laughs> yes. I may have not even pronounced it right. Cause like there's an N in the middle and I don't think I pronounced that N. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not, a, it's not, it's a made up word. Assassins. Hassansins. Hassansins. That's what it is. Hassansins. Yes. There we go. <laughs> 
they're like a secret military fighting force that was supposed to be disbanded, but Nizam obviously did not <laughs> disband them. Mm. And so they get Amar to take them to the dagger sanctu- sanctuary with like the promise of gold. Mm. He's like, no, I'm not right. doing that. And then she's like, you know what? We have <laughs> a lot of gold there. Yeah. And he's like, why are we moving so slow? Like, right. let's go. He's like, you should have said this yesterday. Yeah. And so they arrive at the sanctuary and the Hassansons have killed everyone. How they got there faster than them, no I don't know. Because they were pretty much at the same place. Yeah. So that was weird. And so Tamina realizes that she must return the dagger to the gods, but this will kill her. And Desson's like, no, don't. I love you. <laughs> Basically. Um. But before she can do anything, um, Garsif and other soldiers arrive. And so Dastin tells Garsif the truth. And he's like starting to believe him. He's like, okay, okay. Mm. Like the dots are connecting. Yeah, just a little bit. Before the Hassansons arrive and they like stab Garsif and then they just start killing everyone yeah. for no reason. No reason. Like, I would get going after a uh, Dastan. Yeah, but they start killing everyone. Everybody, yeah. There's no point to that. And so Tamina and Dastan go into the mountain, and he begs her not to, like, return the dagger. And, like, they're about to kiss, but secretly she's trying to, like, return the dagger behind his back. Um, <laughs> and then a Hassanson comes and knocks out Tamina. And then so Dastan parkours his way through a fight. <laughs> and their fight like carries on outside. And Garsev, who is still alive, manages mm. to kill the Hassanson before he himself dies. Mm. Tamina then comes out of the cave after all the Hassansons have left. And she reveals that the dagger is gone. Oh, and, no. and it's revealed that a snake has swallowed the dagger and it was given to Nizam. Um, how did it swallow it? Like the dagger was bigger than the snake. <laughs> yeah. Like I understand that snakes can like swallow big things, but the dagger was like so much longer than the it snake. It was so much longer than the snake, so much like wider than the snake. Yeah. For some reason, the snake was still its normal size. And wouldn't it have cut the snake while it was going inside of its body? Right. Also, I feel like the uh, uh, the hilt of the dagger would have just like choked it or something. Probably. But, you know, the movie's almost over. Let's just yes. continue. So um, <laughs> Amar agrees to go with them to retrieve the dagger after Seiso tells him that they must help with like no words he just stares at him and he's like fine i'll go (laughs) um they make their way into the city and with the help of the palace servants they find out where the dagger is and that nizam has almost made it to the sand glass um seso makes his way into the palace and he has like a knife throwing competition with one of the (laughs) hassansons And then he he wins. He kills the Hassanson. Yes, yay. And then yay. he he throws the dagger to Dastan before he dies from his wounds. Which mm, mm. 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 Dastan then um holds Tuss hostage and tells him of Nizam's plan and then stabs himself with the dagger and tells him to press the press the ruby and it will like make time go back and very yet, extreme very extreme um but he does it luckily he does yeah he, he presses the jewel time goes back and he's like i believe you brother and then Yay. nizam comes in and kills us immediately <laughs> he's like okay she's like yeah you you know way too much way too much which like he's just making this plan so complicated like i said 
Right. At this point, he's accumulating more bodies than he probably needed to. Like, he's killed his entire family, except for Dastan. But he yeah. does, but we later learned he doesn't even consider Dastan family. Right. <laughs> so he killed his entire family. And Small then, price to pay. <laughs> and then he still tries to go back and do the sand glass thing and I'm like you're the only person in the family left like you don't have to do that anymore you don't like they're not going to come back no you've killed them all they're dead but yeah let's keep going Mm because it keeps going yes it does and then so um Nizam like goes to like find the sand glass because like they found it and he leaves mm-hmm. Dastan with a Hassansen. And he and Tamina kill the Hassansen because Tamina's like hiding in a window. Mm-hmm. By, behind a sheer curtain. Behind a way. sheer curtain and no one <laughs> sees her. <laughs> and then they make their way to the sand glass chamber. And Tamina's like, we have to go along this specific route. Otherwise, like the floor will give out. And mm-hmm. When I read that, I was like, okay, like, that makes sense, sure. Until, Mm -hmm. like, something falls, like, a piece of the ceiling falls into the area where you're not supposed to walk, and the entire floor gives out. I thought only the area where you weren't supposed to step was going to give out. The entire floor gave out. Yeah. Yeah, this (laughs) is extreme measures to keep something safe. Very extreme. I was like, how could anyone ever get back in there? right (laughs) like you like the entire floor is gone yeah and it was a it was literally a pebble yeah a pebble hit the floor and like you would think it was like pressurized or something but no it's any and everything at that rate i'm surprised the floor was still there when they got there right like it's it's in a cave it's not stable things have probably fallen for years right yeah stuff is gonna fall in a cave so uh, y'all did not think that through. they did not think it through at all and so tamina makes it safely to like a chamber or something but Dastan gets like pulled in with the sand he slides down and then he parkours his way onto a ledge <laughs> literally everything that that has to do with Dastan, it's just parkour it's just parkour this is parkour the movie <laughs> It is. It is. It's parkour the movie. Because literally, he was hanging off of a ledge of something, and then like some of the floor was coming at him, and somehow he got the momentum to push himself backflip. off, do a backflip, and then land mm-hmm. onto another ledge. Yeah, I would get it if he had like used his legs, but he used his arms. Yeah, and he, that like, made no sense himself. to me. No, but yeah, he he makes it to safety. Yeah, he, he, he does. does. He probably shouldn't have, but he does. Yeah, and then when he sees the sand glass, he is attacked by, like, the head Hassanson, like, who is white for some reason, but, like... Uh, oh, yeah, he yeah. looks... Yeah, all the other ones looked like they were, like, Middle Eastern, um, mm-hmm. Egyptian, but the head one was white. Yeah. The one who spoke was white. Yes. Mm, okay. <laughs> And so they fight, and then Tamina uh, grabs the Hassanson snake and causes him to bite him, which I don't know if it was poisonous or not, but it distracted right. it distracted him yes, enough it for Dastan to like kill him. And then the two like kiss randomly. Yay! Like there because- was yeah there's no lead up to it it's just like oh my gosh you saved my life there was no need for it especially at this moment yeah y'all were busy supposed to be doing something else yeah and then they make their way to the glass and then Dasan fights with Nizam who like refuses to listen to reason like Dasan is like you will destroy the earth he's like I don't care right this man is beyond saving and I'm like you live on the earth sir where are you gonna go Right, like you want to rule, but like you're going to destroy the world to do it. Honestly, yeah. And then can we talk about the fact that he would be like 
a 60 year old man trapped in a teenage boy's body oh my gosh like that that gets glossed over yeah because when you go back into your younger body when you go back to like the past you remember you, you everything. remember everything so he would be like a 60 year old man trapped inside of a teenage boy's body Ugh. there's nothing i would hate more that sounds like hell to me yeah like if i had to if i was 60 something years old and then like i was given the option to go back in time i would not pick 16 right i get to go back in time but i still have the brain i have not no right absolutely I would not not be 16 I mean, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to 16 to go, again at all. Uh-uh. But like, yeah. Uh-uh. I'd have to, like, of course, back then, like, it's different, whatever. But, like, if we're talking in, like, now stages, bro, I would, I'd have to go back to high school. Yeah. And, I'm like, not I'm not that saying again. that high school sucked, but I would not want to do But it wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> and then I had like to I go had... through college again. Oh, my gosh. Bro. I think college would be easier, though, because, like... I probably ace everything and I'm not have to like worry about it but like at the same time like girl I had to take statistics I had to take accounting I had to take Ooh. economic I'm not doing that again <laughs> absolutely I did it not. the first time I don't need to do it again I don't even know how I did it the first time <laughs> I think you just like survival mode blacked out yeah I blacked through out it. And then came back to yourself. <laughs> I literally can't tell you anything about accounting other than assets <laughs> plus, <laughs> my, uh, plus um, equity equals like liabilities. I don't even know, girl. Oh, geez. That makes no sense to me, but that's okay. But it should, because it doesn't make any sense. Economics <laughs> is all made up. <laughs> accounting is numbers are made up. Everything is made up. Right. So, yeah, he refuses. And then to um distract Destin, he pushes Tamina off of a ledge. It was so random. He just like it grabbed was. her, was talking to her, and then just pushed her off a ledge. Yeah, this man really said, you know what? Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> and then so um Destin tries to hold her, but she makes him let go of her so that he can save the world. And then she like, and then she she's doing this to herself, right? Tell me why she was screaming as she was falling for death and like to help her. And I'm like, you told him to let you go. Like you forced but that him. Doesn't, but like, that doesn't mean you're prepared to die. Like she like she made him let her like she opened up her hand so that she would slip out. And I'm like, you can't be putting all that guilt on me. Like you literally <laughs> sitting there forcing yourself. To but fall homie, and then screaming my name as you fall. like don't do that to me but homie she's it's scary she's gonna die uh, and she has to fall i tried to save you i don't i don't need the guilt <laughs> i don't <laughs> need the guilt I, I that was a horrible death it's horrible for him and it's horrible for her yeah was it horrible for her i mean yeah she had to fall for a long time but like after the fall was over like everything was over like yeah. yeah i know but like it's the it's the falling that terrifies whatever she okay. <laughs> she still she still shouldn't have done that okay it was very selfish <laughs> <laughs> and so um destin pulls himself up um they fight a little bit. Somehow Nizam is stronger than Dastan, even though yeah. he's like I said, like 60 years old. Right. He's in the gym three times a day. Three times a day. He was like, <laughs> I need to be prepared in case any of these young folks try to like come at me. Right. And also then, one more one more thing about the time travel thing. Yeah. Um uh the brother did not have to go back. To when they were 16. No. He, he just had to go back before any of his sons were born. True. Because then you're the only one. Okay. Like, bruh. I'm sorry. Like, I, the more I think about it, the like terrible, the more terrible like his plan is. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
<laughs> so so bad. And then so um, Nizam then pierces the glass, causing like all the sands to go out. Mm. And like time is like reversing, the sand is getting out, like everything's going bad. Mm -hmm. um, but Dastan closes it, takes out the dagger, causing time to reverse. And then we're mm -hmm. just taken back to the beginning of the movie, right when they like take over the city of Alamar. Yeah. Um, Dastan then tells everyone of Nizam's treachery. And he's like, no, you're crazy. Like, get out of the sun. Like, go drink some water. <laughs> but then um, Dastan like kind of convinces people and they're like, okay, let's go look into that spy. Like, just in case. Mm-hmm like the smartest thing they've ever done <laughs> in this entire movie <laughs> and they're like yeah just in case and then Nizam then tries to kill death then just proving his point yeah like this man just straight up in the middle of everyone just decides in the like it. literally in the middle like there are hundreds yeah. of people around and he yeah. picks up a sword and tries to kill death then. Bro. like you could have made it impossible because, like, the brothers trust you. You could have made it impossible for them to find the, the spy. Yeah, you could have killed the spy. Right. You could have paid him off. You could have right. literally did anything. Yeah, like, why did you have to... This man, he's not a good villain. Not a good villain. <laughs> not, not, not planning accordingly. Uh -huh. um, and so Destin defeats him. And he's like, yeah. We, we're gonna have a trial for you and then he like tries to walk off and then his um the coward he is tries to stab Dastan in the back and then so yeah. Tuss stabs him and kills him as he should as he should um Tuss then goes to Tamina and apologizes for attacking her city and offers her marriage to Dastan to strengthen their friendships um, and then Destin then returns the dagger to her and they go off and they start their relationship Yay! and at some points during this like end scene it kind of seems like she knows who Destin is but then she doesn't it's very confusing yeah it's kind of like oh I kind of see something in you that I recognize but not but I have really. no idea who you are yeah and I don't know why yeah and that's the end of the movie yeah um, are you ready for the movie facts? Yes, I am. Okay, first one. Before Jake Gyllenhaal was cast in the lead role, Orlando Bloom and Zac Efron were rumored for the part. Not Zac Efron. Not Orlando Bloom. I cannot see Orlando Bloom being it. I mean, it's still just a bunch of white people, but yeah. I I could I mean I guess I, I could, could see, see Orlando Bloom more than I can see Zac Efron. Really? I could see Zac Efron more than I could see Orlando Bloom. Really? Yeah. Because all I see is just him in High School Musical 2, just on that golf course, like hitting the water, singing. And I'm just like, I don't know if that man can parkour was, his way through. Was this during that same period? Wasn't it? I don't I think, think that's so. in the same era, no? Here, let me. When did this movie come out? When did the, Oh, yeah. This came out. This came out after the first movie of High School Musical. I don't know about the second one. Please don't, no. The second one could not have been out in two, 2007. Th 2000, yes, this is way past that. Good. Okay. And then the third one came out in 08. So yeah, it would have been this two is, years after. This is way past high school musical. Yeah, he could have did it. Okay. He could have did it. Okay. Orlando Bloom, on the other hand, I can't see it. He doesn't see like he's good at action. But he did Pirates. He I liked him in Pirates. He wasn't even that good in Pirates. He wasn't. Oh. He really wasn't. Um, yeah. Here's the second one. Okay. <laughs> one of the hardest aspects of production for Jake Gyllenhaal was mastering the English accent. But he found working predominantly with a British crew to be very helpful. Yeah. Because he's in the environment surrounded by it. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last one. In this movie, characters are predominantly seen handling apples and pomegranates. Pomegranates mm -hmm. were considered the original apples and were symbols of strength to the Persian armies. Oh. 
Okay. So really? the one true fact of Persia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pomegranates. 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 I love how that's the thing that they picked up. That's the thing they kept. <laughs> Anything else about their fighting style? The like. How were they eating the pomegranates? Cities? Oh no, I don't think so. It's just yeah. They just show them. They just show them. Probably because it's so hard to eat a pomegranate. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It takes like twenty years to like get all the seeds out. Oh my gosh. And then, by and then, then there's like different ways to get the seeds out too. Yeah. And then by then you're like, I don't even want this anymore. Yeah. You're tired and you're just sitting there looking at your bowl of pomegranate seeds and you're like, maybe not. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the cling wrap? Just, <laughs> put, it in just the put it back in the refrigerator. But yeah. Um, so now it's time for the question, Kelly. Mm. Is it iconic? I think so you do okay yeah it's a good movie like if you don't really think about it it's a good movie yeah it's like it's got its funny parts it i know like 90 percent of the action is just jake gyllenhaal jumping off of buildings yes (laughs) but i think it looks cool they they shot it very well the cgi is a little eh, now that i'm watching it back but it looked pretty good and the story's nice i put no um, okay. it, it's a it's a good movie if uh-huh. you like close your eyes to like the <laughs> fact that there's no people of color in this movie yeah. except for one and then he dies mm-hmm. um yeah or the fact that there's a lot hmm, a lot of bad story points in the plot mm. but other than that it's a good movie yeah it's a good movie like i'll 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 watch it again yeah but i don't think it's iconic okay i feel like it's an iconic jake gyllenhaal role but not an iconic movie oh movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's fair. also this movie does not get played as much as like it maybe should um probably like on tv probably because it's full of white people they're Uh they probably don't want to have to like bring that up you Bro, know, do they you know play, how do you know how they play the Great the, Wall like it's no big deal? The Great Wall, what's that? You don't know about the Great Wall? No, what's I think that? that's what it's called. Wait, let me look it up. Yo, the, the, on the 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 thing, you know how we said there's a lot of white people for pop roles. Yeah, this is the movie I always bring up, the Great Wall, the because Great it is wall. literally a Chinese based movie set in like a some type of feudal era and matt is damon, damon is why, in it why is matt damon in china <laughs> and he doesn't even have an english accent to be like oh i'm from england and i've come to help the chinese he's literally using his american accent wait why is pedro pascal in this movie that's what i'm saying William Def- it's in china and it is involving the great wall and there's like 90 percent of the cast is is asian and but then, the main characters are white. And there's two Freaking white Matt Damon. Two white men and a Hispanic man in China. Yes. Yes. For no reason. They know like never explain it. Aliens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kelly. It's, it, it, yeah. Kelly. It's, it's an insane movie. Aliens? Yes. What is happening? It, yeah, it's no. I'm putting this on the list. <laughs> aliens i can't yes aliens and it's literally directed by a chinese director but they have white male lead like it, what that sounds what? awful it is awful it's when so was bad. this made 2016 mm-hmm. oh no mm-hmm it's so bad. I, I watched it with my mom because I was like, why is Matt Damon in a Chinese movie? And we, we literally sat there and was like, what is this? Wh- why is Matt Damon in China? <laughs> mm, okay. There's, a, so yeah, there's an entire section for controversies on this movie on Wikipedia. <laughs> Seriously, because why? Oh. It's literally white savior and 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 whitewashing. Matt Matt Damon, Matt Damon. Mm. That that's why. Yeah, no, mm. <laughs> nope. 
I wonder if he like disowned this movie. Like Jake Gyllenhaal dis- so. like Jake Gyllenhaal disowned this movie. I wonder if Matt Damon disowned The Great Wall or if he's like, yeah, I was in that movie. It was great. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Okay. But overall, Kelly thought it was iconic. I don't. Yes. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe next time. Maybe they'll reboot it and they'll do it right. Hopefully. Hopefully. Also, I didn't know that this was based on the video game. Yeah. I've never played the video game, but it is. Me neither. Is there a lot of parkour in the video game? Is that why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, you know what other terrible, or oh, this one isn't, te- this movie isn't terrible, but you know what terrible, like, video game movie also has a whole bunch of unnecessary parkour? Assassin's Creed, which also is very <laughs> whitewashed. Oh, my mom loved the Assassin's Creed movie. Re- really? Really? She likes the games. The whole plot made no sense to me. It's because they like the the um there's so many games and they explain it better in the games and they're just trying to stuff everything they can into the movie and it just doesn't make sense. Okay. Cuz I was like why are these prisoners being sent back in time? I was like nothing's making sense. But yeah, you know, they didn't explain anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah, um you should give this movie a watch. Like, it's not a bad movie. Yeah, it's not. Give it a watch. It's a good movie to, to put on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. Um, it's hidden on Disney Plus, though. I will say. It's yes, hidden. it is. I had to put in almost the complete title of this movie yeah. to find it. And even if you put Prince, you have to scroll down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you have to scroll down a little bit. Like, yeah. Disney is hiding this movie. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh no, the main the main guy so he disowned himself from this movie. We gotta hide it. No, we have to hide it. <laughs> like we still have to make money off of it, but like they we have to make it like people have to find it. They really want to watch it. Like I had to pass by movies I'd never even heard of to find this movie. Mm. So yeah, it was bad. Um, but Kelly, it's time for recommendations. What are your recommendations for this week? Okay, so my recommendation this week um so i'm in my uh like crooner mode i go through like waves of different genres of music so i'm going to uh recommend two classics two really good classics um misty by sarah vaughn really Mm -hmm. cute little song um i've actually heard it in like a um a Young Bay song, he like mixed it in, but like when I heard it the first time, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the song Young Bay used. Um, it's a really cute song, give it a listen. Also, the iconic Beyond the Sea by Bobby Darren. Played that, in Nemo. Is that that somewhere? Yes. Beyond the Sea. Okay. Yes. Yes. Classic. I'm trying to broaden y'all's music experience. It is I mean, a, Beyond it the Sea. It is a very classic it's a, it's a classic song so y'all give that one a listen and then misty is kind of more like a uh, niche ish song give that a listen to they're really good songs okay sounds good sounds good um i have two as well they're also mm-hmm. both songs my first one is sock it to me by missy elliott love Ooh. that song the like bass and like the tr- the like horns in it amazing mm great we song love, love missy elliott by the way she's so good so good so good um if you had a favorite like artist in like the 90s her or timberland probably produced for them Oof. like yeah iconic. yeah like, timberland isn't everything like missy elliott probably never has to make another song in her life like she's probably set for life yeah she probably doesn't so love that for her wish her all the best Mm-hmm. we love you love you um my second recommendation um i just finished the like janet jackson documentary last night oh so it's gonna be my favorite janet jackson song that's the way love goes love that <gasps> that's song the way love great great song amazing song. wait but how was the documentary like sorry off point oh it was very good it was really yeah good. yeah i loved oh. it yeah tell me about it it's like oh, four parts it. It was on Lifetime. Oh, yeah. It was good. It was good. Um, 
also for, for this song, Best Way Love Goes, um, there in sync did a cover of it and it's also very good. So they did? Yes. Go listen oh. to that. Um yeah, but like they in sync also has like Janet Jackson's like sign of approval. So like of course <laughs> they sound good. Like she, she took them on tour with her. Like she mm-hmm. amazing. Um go white boy. Go yeah, white go boy. White boy go. go white boy. Go white boy. Go white boy. So um, <laughs> I'm currently listening to every Rihanna album. Oh. Um, I'm currently on, what is it called? Rated R. So like, I'm uh, almost done. I'm yeah, almost, you're done. almost done. Um, but after, I think I'm going to try to listen to every Janet Jackson album. Ooh. But I think I'm going to skip like the first two since they didn't even do well. <laughs> and I'm just going to start at Control. <laughs> I know there could be songs on there that you like there is one song on one of okay. her albums on one of her like earlier albums but I think it'll just trigger me oh okay because they used to play it like at my store all the time oh okay so I, I can't yeah so I'm gonna skip the first two albums and I'm just gonna I'm gonna start at control start at control I'm gonna start okay. at control um I'm a little worried though because her her janet album this the album that has that's the way love goes Uh uh-huh um (laughs) it's 29 songs long oh yeah that is so long and you know me kelly you know i have like a limit of 12 songs 15 max why don't you like put listen to it in halves and have cut it in half like she should yeah, have. Cut it in half. <laughs> <laughs> like she like she should have and made Dang. two different albums i mean a lot of her albums are super long like all for you is super long it's got good songs on it but it's super long oh yeah it's 20 songs mm. yeah the velvet Rope i think i think is... rhythm nation might be like the best one for you i think it's like at your limit i think it's like eight songs love that for me yeah <laughs> um Oh no, Rhythm Nation is long. It's 20. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's at least it's not 28. Jeez. Okay. Oh, there, it, it's oh, it's just a bunch of each. interludes. Okay. Yeah, there's she does a lot of interludes, like preludes. Okay. Sounds good. But um, thank you for listening. That's it for this. Thank week. you. Don't forget to follow us on our social media. We have a Twitter that Kelly still doesn't post on and an so Instagram. So sorry, bro. <laughs> They're both at SYTYI Podcast. Um, don't forget to send us your movie requests or your movie stories at our email, SYTYI Podcast at gmail.com. Um, were you in this movie? Do you know someone who was in this movie? Um, does Jake Gyllenhaal secretly love this movie, but he just pretends like he doesn't like this movie for optics? Were you part of the 2% of the POC people that they uh, hired? Yeah. Were you that man? Were you say so? Like, let us know. Like, I want to talk to yes. you. What was that like? <laughs> um, yeah, let us know. I at SYTYI podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to share us with your friends and your family. Subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen. Mm-hmm. Um, don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps five stars please please yeah um don't forget to wear your mask Mm -hmm. yay yay wash your hands and stay iconic stay iconic y'all bye bye